This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. See, I, you, you, you can't say you're at rest and you're stressed. You, you can't say you're at rest and you're worried. And, and, you, you, and you can tell me you're worried, all we got to do is listen to what you're saying. Yeah, child, I hear what they said about me, but you know, I don't care, I'm going to be all right. And the next person, you come to the same store saying, you ain't rest, you're in stress. And you're not going to see empowerment come out of stress. But the authenticity of your belief can be seen in your rest. When you give, your gift goes to work, spreading the gospel, uplifting communities, connecting believers from all over the world. It's easy to support the ministry with your giving through Change Express. The process of giving has never been easier for those on the go, so get started today. Go to www.creflodollarministries.org forward slash Change Express now to sign up for Change Express. Easy, automatic giving. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. I believe that we can be empowered by rest. I'm going to show you how you can get from God without having to earn it. Be empowered by rest. Now, let's go through some things real quick. Um, Hebrews 4, let's start at verse 1. Let's look at this. I believe that rest is the highest kind of faith. Faith appropriates, well, let me say it another way. Faith takes possession of what Jesus has already made available. And I believe when a, when a Christian enters into the rest, that your faith is taking possession of what's already been made available. You think the greatest thing for you to do is to work, and I'm telling you the greatest thing for you to do is to rest. Now, when I say rest, I don't mean inactivity. It doesn't mean rest from work. It means rest in work. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, while you're working, you ain't stressing. Because right. yes, right. God has not created you to be successful out of stress. I believe that's why we have to go to sleep, because that's the only time God can get something done. <laughs> A lot of stuff he can't do while you wait. Some of y'all need to go to sleep. Well, I, you know, I just don't sleep. Well, I can tell you. <laughs> Hebrews 4, verse 1 through 11. Now, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, that any of you should seem to come short of it. Two, for unto us was the gospel preached. The gospel, I'm referring to the gospel of of Jesus Christ. I'm referring to the gospel of grace as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. So I can preach this gospel to you all day long, but he says there is a possibility that it won't profit you. Why? Because it wasn't mixed with faith in them that heard it. It's amazing. He's talking about rest and he's talking about faith and, 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 and so this thing that has been preached to you Will you believe it enough for it to cause you to rest and release the highest kind of faith in what you believe is already done? That's a powerful thing. 
The most dangerous man on the planet is a peaceful man. Ooh. Who doesn't go around worrying if it's going to happen, but he walks around knowing when it happens. He walks around like a bride in preparation. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. For we which have believed do enter into the rest. So this, the authenticity of your belief is going to be demonstrated through your rest. Somebody says, do you really believe that? Well, what's the evidence of my belief? Rest. See, I, you, you, you can't say you're at rest and you're stressed. You, you can't say you're at rest and you're worried. And, and, you, you, and you can tell me you're worried, all we got to do is listen to what you're saying. Yeah, child, I hear what they said about me, but you know, I don't care. I'm going to be all right. And the next person, you come to the same store saying, you ain't rest, you're in stress. And you're not going to see empowerment come out of stress. But the authenticity of your belief can be seen in your rest. Uh-huh. In your rest. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world today trying to rob you of the authenticity of your faith and your belief, which is your rest. Then when people come across you, you are so at rest, it bothers them. They don't understand why won't you be worried and why won't you complain and why you ain't got nothing to say. Why won't you cuss? God will forgive you, you know. But you, I don't need to do that. Because I believe that it is finished. Oh, I smell a breakthrough getting ready to come in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse, uh, uh, so, for, we, for we which believe, have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundations of the world. Now, he's referring to the foundations of the world. How do you know that Jesus has finished the work in your life? That healing is a finished work. That deliverance is a finished work. That your prosperity is a finished work. That your care is a finished work. That your children are a finished work. I don't care how they act. They are a finished work. Hallelujah. Your children are taught of the Lord. And great is the peace of your children. And it's time for you to rest that my children will be just fine. It'll be all right. You know, they're emotional, they'll cry, and you think the whole world come to an end. It'll be all right. Just, just go pat them on the hand, baby. You'll be all right. I love you. Yeah, but can I move back at home? Mm -mm. <laughs> You'll be all right. You'll be all right. The Lord got to teach us some stuff. You'll be all right. <laughs> well, I hate you. No, no, you don't. You're just emotional. Praise the Lord. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Your destiny has already been finished. You will fulfill the will of God for your life. I don't care how many crooked streets you take, how many pathways you go down. At the end of, path, at the end of every pathway, there's a turnaround. You understand? You see them little new turnabouts, they little round things. You think you're going one way and you end up in that circle coming back the right way. I'm telling you, Siri is going to renavigate you, but reroute, reroute, reroute is coming. I'm, 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 I'm prophesying over your children. Reroute, reroute, reroute. They look like they're going away. You better watch out. Reroute. I'm telling you, reroute. The Holy Ghost will do them like you could never do them. Honey, it's a fixed fight. Praise God. You think God put somebody here to do something, they ain't going to do it because of an act of their will? Are you kidding me? They ain't got that much power. God can set high and bring down. I don't care what they're doing. If the Lord puts you here to do something, honey, it is done. You understand? It is done. So don't get mad at them. Don't have no fight with them. Don't get distant from them. You just love them, kiss on them, and then they're freaking out on you and all that stuff. Why? Because you already know. You, are, you already have seen him work already. Some of y'all, you saw him work in you. You wouldn't even be here right now if you hadn't seen him work in you. Some of y'all should have been dead and buried, but you saw what God did with you. You remember the path you went down because you went down that same path that you're going down. But if God can turn your life around, Get ready, get ready, get ready, get, 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 get ready. Watch. 
But now watch this. Uh -huh. You ain't gonna see that if you working. Cause when you work, God rests. Uh -huh. But when you rest, he work. Yes. All right, now he says, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day. Huh, a day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Now, in a moment, somewhere along the line, we'll talk about the Sabbath. The Sabbath is not a day. Right. Right. The Sabbath mentioned in the Old Testament was a shadow of Jesus. Jesus is your Sabbath. This ain't no day. I ain't talking about no Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. I think the Muslims on Friday and uh, Jewish people on Saturday and then church folks on Sunday. I ain't talking about no day. Da, 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 I'm trying to get you to have a Sabbath every day. I'm trying to get you to wake up tomorrow and have a Sabbath. The Sabbath, listen, the Sabbath that was mentioned in the Old Testament, that was a day. It was a shadow of, of Jesus, the reality. In fact, the Old Testament can be referred to as the book of shadows. It was a shadow of the things to come. And all the shadow of the Old Testament comes down to the reality of Jesus Christ. Jesus in every book of the Old Covenant, but you have to have your New Testament glasses on to see him. Amen. Amen. Uh, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, verse 6, saying, therefore, if it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in, they didn't enter in because of what? Unbelief. So when people are not at rest, people are not in belief. People who are worried, they worry because they don't believe. People who are stressed out are stressed out because they don't believe. And then no devil, you don't believe. Unbelief is the issue. And in some of the case of church folks, it's just wrong believing is the issue. So when you believe wrong, you're going to live wrong, and you ain't going to rest right. <laughs> Verse 7, again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said today, if you will hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Verse 8, for if Jesus had given them rest, uh, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day? I uh, would go through that, but I'm, I'll do it later. 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Okay, so if you're at rest, you're not at work. If you're at rest, you're not at performing. If you're, not at, if you're at rest, you're not through your self-effort sweating to try to get God to do what he's already done. Verse 11, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. So notice he's, like, he's saying don't labor to be healed. Don't labor to be rich. Don't labor uh, to, to be delivered. Labor to enter into the rest. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. My labor is a labor to rest in what I believe has already been done. That's what I'm laboring. What does it look like? You go to the doctor, there's an x-ray that comes up, it shows a tumor or something, and, and uh, you immediately think, well, Jesus took care of that 2,000 years ago. All right? All right, now, you're human, so the pictures and the words of the doctor and all that stuff comes in, and you're human. And so we've got all these emotions that are going to try to trigger because there's a fight to see who's going to lead you. So what you do is you say, okay, Lord, I'm healed already, and I believe I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I'm healed, and I rest in that. And then five minutes go down and something comes to your mind. You're going to die. No, 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 I'm healed. Praise God, he did it 2,000 years ago. I'm certain of it. 
and glory to God, he went into villages and he healed some of those villages, everybody in there. They were not even Christians. And here I am, a born again Christian full of the Holy Ghost. Oh, I am healed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm here. What am I doing? That's labor. That's a picture of what it's like to labor and rest. In other words, you ain't letting nothing go. You ain't letting it go. Uh, some, some come up, oh, God, I just praise you, I'm healed. Some else come up, you just make up a song. I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. Jesus healed me. When? 2,000 years, 2,000 years ago. You ain't got to rhyme, quit out being cute. You're trying to accomplish something. You're trying to release your faith. You ain't trying, you ain't trying to get no Grammy. You're just you're trying to release your faith. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, now, and that goes on for a minute, and maybe it goes on a second day. But you know what's going to happen? One day you're going to wake up. You have no need to labor no more, right? And now you're at rest. Now you're at rest. There's nothing else left to do once you achieve rest. The only thing you do now is worship him. That's because you want to. You're worshiping God. We got to learn how to enter into that rest. But it is a labor. It is a labor. Lose your job, got bills coming up. Father, I thank you. Every time it comes across, oh, you're going to get put out. You're gonna, Father, I thank you that all my needs are met. You're provider of my need. My God's a provider. Oh, God, I'm a tither too. Glory. When I had a job, I was tithing off every check. Glory to God. I'm Thank you, Jesus, that everything is well. All is well with me. All is well with me, boy. Abraham, blessings of mine. Whatever you got to do to labor. <laughs> Whatever you got to do to labor, to enter into that rest. And once you get there, you're going to look peculiar to other people. They can't figure out why you ain't stressing. You tell them because I'm resting. <laughs> Turn your neighbor and say, it's time to rest. <laughs> but now, how? How? I rest when I believe. Well, I just can't rest right now. It's because you don't believe right now. That's right. That's right. See, you can't repair this thing unless you understand. You're not at rest because you don't believe. Hmm. Yeah, but I go to church. I don't talk about all that. Do you believe? But I'm a member of your church. And what do you believe? <laughs> it's getting down to this. This new covenant is all about Man, can I appropriate what Jesus promised? You ain't got to get all deep. Sometimes we complicate stuff by getting all religiously deep. No, I'm going to hear all that. Well, you know Abraham and his, I'm going to hear all that. You, 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 Abraham, no, you. What do, we, do you believe? You, 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 Abraham, you, you believe. Abraham, man, he ain't sick. He in heaven. You, well, you the one who's sick. You want to, you, what you, you believe God is a healer? Well, I believe he's going to heal me one day. You don't believe. We're talking about finished works. We're not talking about one day. Well, yeah, I kind of believe. You don't believe. Had a lady in the, in the conference I was just at, and she was really big on her oil. And she had more faith in that oil than she did in Jesus. Then I kept talking to her about the oil. I said, you got it? She said, yeah, 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 I got it. I said, all right, I'm going to give you an assignment. For one year, don't take no oil with you. She said, oh, Lord. I'm like, you, you ain't ready? <laughs> She said, you ain't ready? She said, but you don't know the places I got to go. I'm like, I done been in them same places. <laughs> See, religion will have you saying something you don't believe. <laughs> she said, I been did when I gave her the test. Her knees buckled. I looked at that test. I said, she ain't ready. She, she got to take that off. I said, so you the reason why my airplane seat when I go commercial is slippery. <laughs> You be going down the aisle, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And then when she get by the window, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Look at Joshua chapter 24, 13. Here's the issue. Some Christian people who've been in church a long time just cannot believe that they can get something from God without having to do something to deserve it. 
I just can't believe that God will do this for me, and I didn't do none to deserve it. Well, I'm going to show you some quick illustrations of God doing stuff, and he didn't need your help to get it done. Verse uh, 13, Joshua 24, and I have given you a land. I've given you a land for which you didn't labor. Uh-oh. He said, I gave it to you, and you didn't labor. I prophesy lands. Not because you work to get it, not because you labor, but God's going to bring some opportunities your way. And a lot of y'all getting ready to move out of the rental apartment into some lands. Say land. But now watch this. He says, and cities, I gave you cities which you built not, and you dwell in them, vineyards and olives yards which you planted not, but you ate from them. You didn't plant them, but you ate from them. Here's what he's saying. I did this without your labor. You think you have been mad? You're getting in my way. <laughs> Deuteronomy 6, verses 10 through 13. Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 13. My goodness. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have bought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of, full of all good things. Oh, they left the furniture. <laughs> full of all good things which I, you, you filleth not. And wells digged, which thou diggest not. What happened to me? I got a well I didn't put, pick up one shovel. I got a well that I didn't dig. Glory be to God. He says, and vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not. He says, when thou shalt have eaten, watch this, and you're full. Watch this, eaten and full. Then beware that you don't forget the Lord. You know how we do. God do something, then we all forgot all about it. You, you know how it is when, it, when, it, when you're in a ditch, you're at church every Sunday. <laughs> at church, that's all. When you're in a ditch, you ever pray some. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you all at the front doing the ballerina stuff? See, because subconsciously, you, you, you're working. Yeah. Uh -huh. It ain't up, praise God, at the seat. I got to come down here and do some work. Maybe, maybe the Lord will do a little extra if I come down here and do a little couple of steps. Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> somehow you feel like I got to do a little something to help him out. It's always Jesus plus your little dancing, and Jesus plus your shouting, and Jesus plus your extra five hours of prayer, and Jesus plus your one month of fasting. You're always adding something to Jesus because you don't believe that he is So it says, when I give, when I prove to you I didn't need your sweat, yeah. don't forget me. Yes. Don't forget me. I'm the one that bought you out of the land of Egypt. I'm the one that got you out of the house of bondage. I'm the one that delivered you from that job that was stressing you out. I'm the one that gave you promotion when they said they weren't giving promotions. I'm the one that allowed them to drop the price on the house when they said you would never be able to afford it. I'm the one that spoke to that person to give you that car when you know you needed a car. I'm the one that healed your body when they said they had no cure for your healing. Don't 